What I'm about to show you may upset some, and I want to prepare you in advance. If you saw the video I did previously, I am showing people what is actually going on, the documented facts of how our living standards will decline. And in today's video, I'm going to show you something we need to look at in depth and we need to start getting serious. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Look, I know that this isn't a sitcom. I know that this isn't some entertaining TikTok video, but it is important, and I'm gonna explain exactly why. If your name is Jeff Bezos, if you're one of the billionaire crew, you don't have to watch this video. But if you are not part of the globalist elite, you got to pay attention, okay? I'm going to talk about this. It connects in with this other video I did, and I want to make it clear. What I uh, spoke of recently and a couple times is the RCMP, okay? This is basically, think of it like the FBI of Canada. And what they had said is that they expect living standards to decline over a five-year period. They are warning about other things, okay? This video is very important. I wish more people had watched it. But the point here is that it's not just me that's saying it. It's actual agencies like the RCMP that didn't, by the way, they didn't just say this publicly, they released a secret document within the RCMP. And then we had to get uh, what is the equivalent of a Freedom of Information Act request to try to pull that data. And they did. And most of it was redacted. And still, it was troublesome. Now, look here, Bezos buys $90 million pays $90 million for the third mansion in Florida buying spree. So it's fantastic. This guy over here, he's able to get yet another property on this exclusive Indian Creek Island where all of the richest of the rich, also known as billionaire bunker, they come in, they buy it up. And now the lots are worth tens of millions of dollars just for a lot with nothing on it. And uh, fantastic for these people. Um, really good, right? I mean, if you're part of that elite club, I mean, this is great because stock market has gone up, real estate has gone up, everything's doing real well. Uh, no issues. Uh, look, if you're Tim Cook, you sell $33 million of shares. Okay? No problem. This was on April 3rd, sold $33 million in shares. The stock market, they're trying to get people to buy into the stock market. Everything is great. We're, we're selling robots now, Apple. Yay. Oh, but by the way, I'm the CEO and I'm selling $33 million of stock. Okay. Gucci's China shock reverberates across the luxury landscape. Fears of a slowdown among Chinese shoppers have dogged the luxury industry for the better part of a year. Uh-oh. And now right here, Gucci is at the center of it. So not everybody and not all luxury are doing well. This is a problem here. So we need to start looking at the intricate details of the haves and the have nots, where the money is being spent and where the money simply isn't going. Now, let's take a deeper look. Quiet luxury is alive and well in 2024. This is like old money, right? Yeah, you have money, you put the cash aside, you might buy things that are not flashy, not the Versace with the, you know, maybe it's got bells and whistles all over it. It's more about, okay, if I want to look good, maybe, uh, you know, not no name brands, maybe something that I could subtly wear, or maybe it's something that I invest in, and I don't really show anybody. These kind of things are now why? Maybe they don't want to get a, be a, become a target for all the crime. Look at what's happening where you have watch spotters. So in London, this is particularly evident where they have a watch spotter. A guy comes out of the hotel. He's seen wearing a $500,000 uh, Richard Mill. $500,000 Richard Mill, he comes out, they say, okay, that guy, now he's got to come back to the hotel at some point. And late at night, he comes back and he has made an offer. Do you like the watch? Yes, it's my watch. Okay, would you like to keep the arm? Okay, yeah, give us the watch. That's the way it works, okay? And these type of things are going on all the time. 
So of course, people are saying, ah, you know, I don't want to, I don't want that. So maybe quiet luxury is the way to go. California food chains laying off workers ahead of new minimum wage law. You increase the price. You, you do this to companies, they lay people off. You got to realize the value of the quote unquote human resource is declining. Housing affordability has just totally collapsed. Would-be homebuyers need to earn $113,000 a year to afford the typical house in the United States. That is 35% more than what the typical household earns annually. Okay, that's a problem. It's more. <laughs> the, the, it's more. You see, and that's an average. That's just an average. So this is the problem where all the prices of stuff is going up. And then you say, okay, well, I want a better wage. I want a better salary. You negotiate the better salary and then just start firing people. Do you see the problem here? Retirement crisis looms as Americans struggle to save. People can't save, particularly when they're in this circumstance where, you know, you're, you're looking at this. It doesn't matter what they were making, what they are making and all these things. The, the bills are going higher and higher and higher. Huge concern. Looking at this, Canada ranks last in primary health care access among 10 wealthy countries. So supposedly, free health care. Oh, it's so fantastic. Look at how wonderful everything is doing. Oh, it's so good. Last. Last. They continuously cut services. People don't know this. Why is it becoming so popular in Canada to have private health clinics? It's free. It, it's free to have the public and it's supposedly fantastic. So why are public or private healthcare clinics popping up everywhere? It's because the services of those other things are getting cut, cut, cut. Oh, it's free though. Yep, sure. Can America's middle class still afford home ownership in 2024? These are the things that are going on right now. Well, of course people can't. And I think it's pretty clear when you see what's happening that it can't. And it's all because they devalued the currency. And guess what? They're going to do a lot more of that. Of course, we have Canada's largest telecom cutting 9% of the jobs. Outlook is soft. Look, you can see this all over the place. More and more and more. They are cutting, cutting, cutting. This is a worry. This is a concern. And here we go. Now, I want to make something very clear. I need to preface this. We are about to face living standard declines like we have never seen before. I'm talking worse. At the very least, the living standard decline from 2020 into 2024. You can expect that again at the very minimum. All right. What I'm about to show you well, has there's, it's been part of a lot of misinformation that's been going on out there. Uh, I'll tell you that this is from the Calgary Herald. So it's a newspaper in Canada. And they this is an opinion article. But of course, we've seen a lot of other information coming out that does suggest this. But I want to make it clear that Trudeau, as wonderful as he is, his hair is fantastic. He did not say this. So you're going to search this on the internet and, and it makes it seem like he said this. And he didn't say this quote. This is part of an opinion article. If you did, if you do have some video or something of him actually saying it, send it to me and then I can make sure that that is corrected. But the way that I read this, the way that I looked through, I tried, I scoured the internet around this. It is not actually him saying it. This is an opinion, okay? But again, we've seen countless institutions and the government itself suggesting something to this effect anyway. But I want to make it clear, okay? Because I like to be honest. I don't like to get too extreme in things. Despite, okay, we got the Trudeau government, its own projections is expecting a 100 megaton reduction in the oil and gas sector by 2030. Exactly how? Not specified, but potentially. So what do we know for sure? They want to reduce the oil and gas sector by 2030. Terrible news for Canada being a resource nation. Okay, you're, you're getting rid of oil and gas. And that's not very good for 
Alberta, who's relying on that. Okay. Uh, but we have this. Okay. So we have all these different things. Um, don't basically just kill those businesses. That's what they want to do. But the one I highlighted is um, terrible. It's, I mean, I couldn't believe it. Um, but here we go. Limit personal consumption of hydrocarbons by individual Canadians in terms of allowable miles travel by motor, vehicle, train, or air. I've talked about this before, so I'm just but seeing it in print is a little bit crazy. We've seen the World Economic Forum talk about similar things. We've seen others talk about similar things. That what do we do? You get an allotment. You get an allotment. You are allowed this many, and that allotment might be something you, you never even use. It's five times higher than what you would use, so it doesn't even bother you. There's just one problem, though. We enter an emergency. Oh, it's an emergency. We got to reduce the allotment, but it's only temporary, guys. It's only two weeks, right? We heard that one before. Just two weeks. And these things start to add up. And of course, you have an issue when this just... Basically, your, your daily life is now impacted by something that the government put in place i mean it, it could affect the way that you live your life do you see this do you see this as a problem this is a big concern they could absolutely restrict travel they could do this very well by different means or they say there's no restrict they don't call it a restriction what they can do is basically saying this is your allotment and there's no issue with with going over you go over your allotment Oh, but you just pay a tax, you pay a fine, you pay a fee. And it's all automated, you know, it just it goes in your taxes at the end of the year. They make it super easy and, and seamless and and there's no friction there. So you can just drive, oh I, oh, I went over, just like you would pay a toll on a toll road. No big deal, right? But those continue to increase. And who does it impact the most? It's those that are not in the elite class. They don't care about paying a higher fee or tax, okay? It, it's it's insignificant in terms of their wealth. So who is this really targeting? It's everybody else. Do you see the big concern? Do you see the problem here? And why I believe people should get wise to this fact. We need geographical diversification, number one. We need currency diversification, making money from different parts of the world and the ability to get up and go at any time. Most people, their position, where they work, the, the everything is focused around a local area and that is a very dangerous thing. We need to start opening our eyes to the reality of the circumstances we live in today. I help people every Sunday in the Money GPS business life for over two hours every Sunday. And I just teach people how to build an online business and how to be able to escape the nine to five. It is a paradigm shift that's required, but I, I think the people that are in the group are absolutely fantastic. And I'm so excited to see what they've been building. All right. I want to thank you for being here. Hit that thumbs up button. If you do appreciate this information, I know it's not fun. I know it's not TikTok and whatever, but I do appreciate that. Hit that thumbs up button. And as always, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.